Hello. Today I wanted to make a video sharing with you how I make a living woodworking, uh, building furniture. And uh, to start that video, we're going to have uh, to go outside. So uh, let's go. So this is, uh, this is how I do it. My, uh, my wife and I opened a store. It's a furniture and home decor store. So we sell the furniture in there that I build. And then we also uh, sell all kinds of other products that we, uh, that we order and sell. So uh, this is our storefront. And uh, in our unique situation, let this car pass. <laughs> We're on a busy road. So uh, our unique situation, what, uh, what makes this viable for us is the property that we bought uh, had a house on it also. This used to be a church, and, uh, and that's the parsonage. So uh, we actually live on the property in that house, uh, and that you know, helps us quite a bit to, uh, to be able to do this. So uh, let's go inside real quick. I'll show you the store, and then we'll end up in the shop and, and talk more. So this is actually our, uh, our second store. Our, uh, this store is 4,500 square feet. Um, our first store was only 2,500 square feet. And, uh, and it, had, it was the same situation. It, used to, it was an old rundown building in really bad shape. And uh, we uh, spent several years remodeling that while I still worked my full-time job. And we, we sold our house to, uh, to buy that property. It had a small house behind it. Um, it's crazy that we found two properties that uh, we were able to do that with both of them. But uh, so anyway, we uh, we sold our house. We bought that property. The house was was not even close to being able to be lived in. They had it listed as it was a small, small little stone building that was built back in the uh, 1930s. And uh, they had it listed as a storage shed. <laughs> so uh, when our house sold, we uh, ended up living in the business building for about six months while we finished remodeling uh, the house. And then once we got into the house, we got our storefront remodeled. Um, I quit my job. We took out a loan to finish our remodel work and uh, got open about six months after that. And then uh, we were in that building for, for about four years. This is one of the pieces that uh, that we built. This is another one. Um, so we were in that we were in that building for uh, for about four years, and we did the majority of the work on that building. And we were our own contractors, so the work we did contract out. You know, we just hired directly, um, which saved us a lot of money. And uh, when we sold that property to buy this one, we did really well on that. We we made out really well. We put about one hundred fifty thousand into that property, um, but made made a lot more than that and was able to buy this property and do the same thing here with the money that we made you know from that from that property uh, and you know we, we've got a house and this 4500 square foot store so it worked out really well for us um, I've been walking around the store while I was talking but let me so you know this used to be the sanctuary in the church um, and we, we tore the ceilings out and just opened up the rafters. Um, all that wood on the back wall used to be strips that ran along the ceiling here um, that the sheetrock was attached to. So when we tore all that down, we saved it and uh, put it on the back wall. This, uh, this whole area over here, that used to just be a single doorway. We opened it up and uh, there used to be a hallway in there and several different classrooms. We tore all that out. Uh, put a beam in there and opened it up and made that more sales floor space. And then, uh, you know, there was a stage up here. There was a baptistry <laughs> behind that wall. Uh, this was also a single doorway. Um, we opened it up into a double door, and that uh, that goes into the wood shop. So we build right there, and you know, customers can see us building from in the store. And what's nice is when my wife isn't here. Uh, it's slow. You know, I can be in the wood shop working, and I can still see into the store here, 
and the parking lot is just right outside my shop so i can also see when when customers pull in but uh very convenient and uh easy to go home for lunch <laughs> this uh this room back here like i said there used to be a baptistry back here we tore that out it's just a long skinny room and we made that into our finish room and uh and I'll show that to you too. It's it's really a, a mess and there's not much to that, but I'll go ahead and show it to you and look and show you what we did back there. We also, if you can see the corner of this building right here, uh, we built a large building out here. Uh, it's about 2,500 square feet and uh, we store all kinds of lumber in there. Uh, I've got some slabs out there. Uh, we use that old tractor to move the slabs around. This is uh, this is our well house. <laughs> we are we are out a little bit, but uh, we're right in the middle of, of our community. So we've got you know big towns on either, either side of us. Uh, so anyway, let's go in the wood shop real quick. So you know that's that's how I uh, that's how I am able to make a living as a woodworker. I subsidize it with uh, with the other things that we sell in our store, and obviously. Um, it's my wife's job too, so both of us um, work here, and uh, she runs the store, and I uh, I work in my wood shop. Um, so this is our we have an exterior door for the shop. That's our that's our parking lot right there. It's uh, you know we bring all of our lumber in through this door, and uh, and this is kind of the layout of the shop. We uh, put the table saw right in the middle. There's, this is a two-person shop. I have another another guy, James, that uh, that works with me full time in here. Um, he works Monday through Friday. I work Tuesday through Saturday, and I'm usually in here a little bit on Sundays and Mondays too. That's the downside to living right behind your store. Um, is working seven days a week. But uh, so uh, we have our table saw. We have an assembly table, outfeed table right behind that. And uh, one of us is one of us is always working there. We kind of switch back and forth right now. That's that's a project that James is working on. Um, that's going to be an entertainment center for somebody. And then uh, and then this is our other work table, and we've got it on wheels, which is which is very nice. If you've seen any of our other videos, you may have seen us. Uh, we use that to to get slabs in the door. Um, it's just nice to be able to move it around. Sometimes we have it facing this way. Sometimes we have it facing that way. Some, you know, we can move it out of the way or back and forth, depending on what we're doing. It's just uh, a huge help having that thing on wheels. Uh, and this is the project I'm working on right now. It's uh, it's a slab table. Uh, it's four feet wide and eight feet long. And then uh, that's the base that it's that it's going to set on. And, uh, and I'll be putting a video out on that later. So back when this was a church, this room was uh, like their gathering room. They had uh, they had a whole a full kitchen over here. They had a place for a stove and a refrigerator, it has a sink, um, and then they had a closet back over there with folding tables and folding chairs. Uh, and I think you know they would set it all up in here and uh, and have their meals or whatever. Um, I'm not a, a huge fan of the, the tile and stuff over here, but uh, it's not it's not my kitchen. It's uh, it's my wood shop, so I have not taken the time to uh, you know to tear that out and do anything different with it. It works fine for what we're doing. It's uh, amazing having a sink in the shop, and uh, and these cabinets have been have been huge. Um, you know, we've got obviously our drills all hanging right there. We've got an air compressor in the corner back there. So back kind of the flow to the shop, I'm just kind of bouncing around here. Um, we've got our table saw right in the middle, which I think I said that a few minutes ago. Um, got a nice aisle, uh, the joiner, another aisle, and then along this wall, we've got uh, two radial arm saws. This one we have set up to cut uh, three quarter inch tenons. We keep it three quarters inch off the table. And, uh, and that's the only thing we ever use that for. We, we never move that saw. It's always set up in the same same position. And uh, once again, if you've ever seen any of our videos, you, you'll, you'll see, uh, you'll understand what I'm talking about when I talk about it. it's just set up three quarters inch off the table. But uh, this is a beast here. We, we don't use it very often. Um, it popped up on Facebook Marketplace and I, I couldn't pass it up. It has a 14 inch blade on it. It's an industrial saw. Uh, I love that thing, but uh, 
doesn't see a lot of use, but uh, it's awesome. Miter saw, all this, um, we've got dust collection that runs underneath here and goes up into our DC that's back here in the corner. I tried to put the lattice things in the back corners to keep it as far away from the store as we could. So the DC is over there and then the air compressor is back in the other corner. Uh, they're still loud, but they're not, uh, not terrible. It's not terrible in the store. So uh, both of these have, uh, have blast gates underneath them here. Uh, there's the blast gate for that, and there's the blast gate for the miter saw. So the miter saw, how I did that, I, uh, I went to Lowe's and got uh, a floor vent register and uh, set it up down here and have it going down to four inch pipe. And then it just goes down and goes on through to the DC. And then I just kind of built this wood around it. So, you know, if, any, if you're familiar with a DeWalt at all, it's a great miter saw, but uh, terrible dust collection. And uh, I did spend a couple of hours today cleaning the shop up for this video. <laughs> so, uh, so it's all clean and pretty now, but normally there is uh, sawdust all around this thing. But uh, that does make a huge difference, especially with the dust in the air. Because occasionally I'll walk up here and uh, cut something without turning the DC on and, and the dust will hit me in the face. And, you know, I notice it because when you do turn the DC on, it, it gets sucked down there and, uh, and you don't get that. Um, so it's far from perfect. There's always sawdust all around this. But uh, the biggest thing that that does for me is, is sucks the dust out of the air and gets it to go on down instead of uh, up into your face. Uh, we've got some squares and, you know, we don't have any fancy squares. They're mostly Johnson and uh, they work great. They're square. That's all we need. We put a uh, mini split in. This is our, this is our clipboards for, uh, for our jobs. We've got two, two project clipboards, one for me and one for James, and then a squeeze clipboard. They're smaller projects that I work in in between our other jobs. And then, uh, and then this is a clipboard with, uh, with a notepad on it that I'm, obviously you can see I, I use all the time. Uh, but anyway, so we've got, uh, we put a mini split in here. It, uh, back when it was a church, they, uh, they just had a heat and air, air conditioning window unit uh, framed in here. And uh, we still use that thing on occasion, believe it or not. But uh, this mini split has been kind of a pain for me before I, uh, before I built that air filter box on top of it. Um, that is definitely not something that's ideal for a shop unless you do something like that. I got that from, uh, from Jay Bates. Um, and I've, I've seen another woodworker on YouTube that has done that, that did that since then. And he got it from Jay Bates also. Uh, mine's a lot smaller than, than both of theirs, but uh, that's the only space I had uh, to be able to do that. I put a 10-inch uh, a filter on this side and then these two filters here, and I've actually got another 10-inch filter. I've, I've got a, a hole on the other side that I've got blocked with plywood right now, but I've got another 10-inch filter coming that's going to go up there. Uh, so I have filters all the way around it, and you know, every other day I turn it off and take the filters out and blow them out because uh, uh, there's just so much dust in the air in here. Without that, a, uh, so especially, in a, you know, we work in this shop every day. We, we're creating dust and there's dust floating around in here every day. If you had a, uh, if you did something like that just in your, in your home shop, thought I'd turn around and let you look at me instead of uh, just staring at that. But uh, if you did something like that in your, uh, in your home shop probably wouldn't be as big of a deal but uh but we're creating dust every day for you know eight to ten hours a day and uh and we've had a lot of problems with that mini split because of that um, i've taken it apart and cleaned it several times it's gotten clogged up uh, the drainage has gotten clogged up several times uh, and then you can just tell the air isn't very cold because it's just so covered in sawdust in there. Um, I get up there with at least once a week and, and open it up and blow it out with a, with the, uh, air, um, and just tons of dust comes rolling out of it. Uh, I've had, you know, the space underneath it, which is all kinds of junk that came, that I'd blown out of that thing. So, uh, 
all kinds of problems so far that uh, filter box that we put on top of it has uh, has worked really well and uh, and I definitely I think Jay Bates has had his for several years now and still swears by it um, his like I said his filter box is quite a bit bigger than mine but that one so far seems to be working for us I've had it up there for about a month and uh, and it's it's done a really good job so it's a huge improvement uh, So anyway, back to uh, back to the shop tour. So uh, let me switch this back around here. I've got a little lathe back here. I almost never use that. Um, we keep all of our cardboard stored behind that. I, I keep a lot of big sheets of cardboard. Um, we put those on the ground when we have uh, glue ups, so the glue dripping off of them. We don't just make a big pile of glue on the floor. Although we do have glue all over our floor, you know anything we can do to not add to that. <laughs> That's what we use that for. We also put it on our workbenches uh, a lot, or when we're wanting to pad a, uh, a project after we've gotten done sanding it, we'll, uh, we'll use that. Uh, drill press. Uh, you probably don't, you don't see these in the shop a lot anymore because everybody has a uh, uh, Festool Domino, but uh, I, I love this thing. I mean, that's, that's what I learned to make my mortise and tenons with. So, uh, you know, we, we still make most of our mortise and tenons with, uh, with that dude right there. And, uh, and it's awesome. I bought it used on Craigslist. I bought this used on Craigslist. I bought that used on Craigslist. The, uh, miter saw I bought new, obviously those two I bought used, uh, Craigslist and craigslist on that one also that one i drove two and a half hours away to pick up um bought my uh dust collection new the bandsaw i bought new from grizzly and uh obviously that's that's my newest tool in the shop we just recently upgraded from an eight inch to a 12 inch joiner uh table saw we've had for almost 10 years and uh and it's been a great table saw the uh, planer I bought used off of Craigslist, still paid uh, quite a bit of money for that, but, uh, but it was used. And then uh, we, uh, we have two Marcus Sanders and uh, two of these Nail Fisk. Uh, they're technically a uh, vacuum cleaner, but they have a, uh, they're built to be used just like this. They're, they're HEPA filters. Um, they have the switch to, uh, to run off, to take off whenever you turn a tool on. So you just plug your tool in there. Uh, they work, you know, just like, uh, and they're, they're a little, they're still really nice, uh, really nice vac, but, uh, they just don't have a, you know, Merca name on it or a Festool name on it. Um, they're a really high quality HEPA vacuum, but, uh, because they don't have, the Merca or Festool on them, they're, they're a little cheaper. They're still expensive, not gonna lie, it's not cheap, but uh, it's not near as cheap as a, as a shop vac, but, uh, but they are cheaper than the, the name brand ones. And, that, and that's a name brand, it's just not one you've heard of. They're, they're a vacuum cleaning company. <laughs> so, uh, and, and the, I believe, I heard from somewhere that they make the Merca vac. Uh, I don't know that that's true, but, uh, uh, that's how I heard about them and, uh, and they've worked really good for us. We've had them for several years and we keep our, just our hand tools and stuff in here. We've got some hand on the, we've got our wrenches and screwdrivers and stuff back there, clamp wall back here. Um, and I think all of my pipe clamps, except for two or three of them, I bought used. I got most of those in two different lots, um, off of Facebook marketplace and Craigslist. Got, got lucky and found two big lots that uh, you know, I just bought everything they had at a really good price. Now let's, uh, let's go look at the finish room real quick and then I'll show you our, uh, our wood storage and, uh, and that'll, that'll, be the, that'll be the end of the video. So uh, let's go right back here. So this is what we this is where we finish our furniture most of our furniture um, it's a long and skinny room uh, we, we do a lot of big tables so uh, we can fit a 10-foot table in here you know we'll have the the top down there and the uh, and the base along here 
and uh, just be able to get around both of them to get finished on them. Um, the city made me, made me buy this expensive cabinet to keep all of our finishes and stuff in. It's a flame retardant cabinet. So there's all of our stains and finishes. And that's it. It's just, uh, it's a, you know, it's, there's not a, not a lot to this room. And as you can see, it's, it's a mess. We've, you know, this is, this is some back stock for the store. Uh, we've got another room back there that we, uh, that we have most of our back stock in, but, uh, it's right into here also. And let's go out real quick and I'll, uh, I'll show you the, uh, our wood storage. So you come out this door. Come on, Molly. And this, uh, this is our wood storage. We, uh, this, we did add this building. This wasn't here when we bought the property. Uh, you don't realize how sloped the ground is. It didn't seem that sloped until they, uh, until they put this foundation in. I was like, holy cow. Um, but anyway. There's no power out here. I haven't haven't ran any power out here yet, so uh, no lights. And uh, and it is a mess. We've uh, we've got these wood racks. These are the, we've been using these racks for I don't know ten years. And uh, this style, not these exact racks, because uh, you know we've changed properties halfway through. But uh, we've been using this style rack for 10 years and it's uh works really well for us um, a lot of this lumber is uh is reclaimed we do uh we do both we work with new wood and we also work with reclaimed lumber so a lot of this is out of out of barns and there's just rack after rack after rack all the way back and then uh this is actually from one of my customers. They uh, they took a barn down on their property. He owns a uh, he owns a restaurant, and uh, we're going to build him a big outdoor table, a twenty foot long outdoor table, out of uh, out of this lumber here that came down on on his property where his restaurant is. And then there's also uh, we've got back stock in here for the store, uh, Christmas merchandise. There's uh, there's our big pile of slabs. I uh, had to move that one over yesterday because I was out here with a customer picking a slab out with them. Got uh, all these four by four posts that we uh, that we use all the time for legs. They're oak. There's big beams back over there, and then uh, some nice hardwood up there on that rack. And boxes of Christmas that have recently come in that we're gonna be putting out in the store before too long. And that's it. That's uh, that's our messy, uh, messy woodshed. We I just finished flattening a slab, and that uh, that's the frame I used to to flatten that slab. I need to get that put back away. You know, I know I didn't go into uh, into a ton of detail, uh, numbers and that sort of thing. If if you're interested in hearing more about our numbers and how we, uh, oh, how we make it, I guess. Um, you know, feel free to ask about that in the comments. And uh, I guess if I get enough feedback, you know, I'd be happy to make another video. <laughs> Look at this ugly spot in the ceiling right here. We uh, we were we had to build an eight foot round uh, tabletop for somebody a while back, and I could not flip it over in here. So we had to uh, cut part of the ceiling out so we could get it flipped over. Uh, and we had to do that several times to get the get it sanded and finished and everything. It's horrible pain. I would love to have a higher ceiling. Our uh, our first shop in our first store was the same way, eight, eight foot ceiling. It was terrible. But uh, anyway, um, if you'd like to hear more detail about uh, about our business as a whole, um, you know, ask about it in the comments, and and I'll definitely go go more into that. I'd be happy to do that. <music> Thank you.